When we talk about trust in the media, there are a few elements that we somehow need to discuss in depth at least, or a little bit at least, and one of them would be credibility. And credibility would be credibility of the source, as in the media outlet, or the credibility of the person, the journalist who is doing the story, writing the story, or doing the talk show, for instance, and also the credibility of the source that is being quoted. All of these have different types of measurements that we can use to see. All of these are important because if you look at research and all of the studies that have been done on this topic, or from, they've been looked at from different areas, they all uh, measure people's own perception and own ideology and own person, whoever they are, and how they absorb the information. So we always say we care about media content because it, what we actually care about at the end are the effects of the media. And effects, something will not affect me if I'm not a certain type of person, for example, okay? That could go different ways. So for us in the new media environment, for instance, for us to develop trust, you have to go back again to the basics, which is professionalism and skills, and also show the people that you are, as a journalist and as a media outlet, you are actually different and you are not just like anybody who is able to produce content because right now everybody can produce content. Based on uh, what I see in the different parts of uh, the Arab countries, the, in the different parts of the Arab world, you have to, for you to gain the trust of the people, you have to give them something that matters to them. So show them that you are able to provide information that is impactful. And impact means things that could change your life. And most of the, if we look around the Arab region or anywhere else, I would say, anywhere in the world when there are social um, uh, demonstrations or social, there's social upheaval, there are, there's, uh, you know, some, some type of uh, issue going on at a mass level, it's always because the people are demanding things that in general the government is not giving them. This is usually the basic, uh, you know, formula for, for uh, social unrest and social movements. So the, the media's job in this case would be to go beyond who is doing what, at what time, who is blocking what roads, to go into the details of what could the government do, for example. In this case, try to provide answers, bring in analysts who can go beyond the actual minute-by-minute -minute play, the play-by-play, -play, which is, again, who did what, to whom, and go beyond that and start to provide solutions. That would, I believe, gain trust. They could, media in this sense, could reclaim their space and could show others, everybody who is creating content, that they are truly different and they are professionals and they are skilled at going beyond what we see. Because right now, I could just take a video of one bird flying and that could go viral for some reason, correct? But it's not that, so anybody could do it. And actually, when it comes to this, so uh, media are losing, traditional media lose, because they cannot be anywhere and everywhere. So it's also not fair for the people to expect them to do that. And now the people I see in the Lebanese context, the Lebanese people have been so demanding of the media. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but you, a lot of times I see that for the media, uh, trying to be everywhere, it doesn't work because you cannot be everywhere. And people think that is the media's job to be able to cover everything at all levels. It doesn't work this way. So you have to carve that special area that you are really good at, which is go in depth and provide the real information, provide maybe some investigations and analysis, something for people to say, okay, now I'm happy. I didn't waste my time watching a talk show for an hour. I actually learned something. This is what regular people cannot provide, and social media, as in citizen journalism, and regular people cannot provide. That's where journalists would be able to, to be quite special. I want to stress the importance of ethics in this. The ethics, regular people are not trained in ethics. They don't know what they could and could not do, but journalists should be trained in ethics and should know what the lines are, what lines they can and cannot cross. This is the time where they could, the media could, in times of social unrest and conflict, they should go beyond 
the small details of who did what because we could all see and that could be literally just breaking news but the story that will remain with them and for you to know that you didn't waste your time on uh, what maybe it's half an hour reading a story or watching it uh, on TV or uh, listening to a source it's because something has impacted you in a way that made you more uh, aware of a situation helped you in some type of way to make your life better because in most of the countries in the world that's the role of the media it's just really it's public service so if you're not doing that if you're not helping the public navigate through their lives then what are you doing mm -hmm.